Okay, uh, forming ionic compounds. Let's consider that. Um, when you out the formulae of uh, ionic compounds, um, you've got to think about charges and the charges on ions. And you do have to know those charges on the ions. Now some of them can be relatively straightforward and uh, the use of a uh, periodic table can be uh, very useful for this. So for example, if we take a periodic table like this, we can see that we've got group one here. Group one elements have one electron in their outermost shell and they will tend to lose that electron to get to noble gas electron configuration. Now remember what I'm saying here is always a generalization. Um, it works reasonably well for period one and period two. Um, and uh, some of the groups, for example, group one is fine. But uh, other areas of the periodic table, it does get a little bit more tricky. But let's carry on anyway. So group one, pretty much all going to have a plus one charge. Group two, again, plus two charge. We'll forget about the transition elements for the moment and just move on to group 3 or 13. Now boron is one of these elements that is more non-metallic than uh, metallic so I'm going to just concentrate on and below. Um, that being in group 3 having three electrons in its outermost shell will tend to lose those three electrons to form a plus three charged ion. Group 4 elements, um, well the elements like carbon and silicon certainly don't form uh, ionic compounds so we can forget uh, about, uh, about those but further down things like tin and lead certainly will uh, and those form plus 2 charge ions for example. So it, it, it does really get quite complex but I'm going to ignore those for now because uh, you will tend to find that there are clues in terms of the name of the compound uh, that will help you uh, determine the, uh, the uh, charge of the ion. Let's just move to the extreme right of the periodic table, group 0 or group 18, noble gas elements of course, full outer shell of electrons, uh, at least for helium and neon noble gas electron configuration certainly for all of them they tend not to form ions therefore losing or gaining electrons so uh, uh, we can forget about those in terms of uh, ionic compounds group 7 or 17 um, these elements of course have seven electrons in their outermost shell they will tend to gain one electron to get to noble gas electron configuration therefore they will uh, tend to have a negative one charge for the ion. Uh, group six, again, um, six electrons in its outermost shell tend to go to noble gas electron configuration, negative two charge. And following the same pattern, group five, three electrons in their outermost shell, minus three. So that's all fine and hunky dory. Um, but there are some problems uh, for these, especially in the transition elements and these are things that you do need to learn. So for example zinc will tend to form a plus two iron. Copper will tend to form a plus two iron. It is possible to get a plus one iron there as well. Iron here can be or plus three. So it does get see silver that's quite an important one to remember that is plus one. As I've mentioned a little bit earlier it is sometimes possible to get an idea about the charges. So for example if you've got uh, a compound such as iron 3 chloride that is telling you that 3 there is telling you for all intents and purposes that we have a 3 plus iron uh, uh, there and if you have to have iron 2 sulfate 
that too is telling you that charge is a 2 plus ion. These 2s and 3s aren't really telling you about the charges uh, per se, they're really um, indicating oxidation numbers, but we'll consider those later. Um, so you get some clues from the periodic table and quite often you will get some ideas from these Roman numerals to tell you about the charges. But there are other things that you will just have to learn. So for example, the ammonium ion is NH4+. Plus. No clues, you've just got to learn it. Um, plenty of other others to learn as well. Carbonate, for example. CO3 2 minus sulfate SO4 2 minus nitrate NO3 minus it really is just a matter of knowing these there are some clues that you can have for example sulfuric acid has the formula H2SO4 now if you know the formula of sulfuric acid is H2SO4, you can tell that you've got two H pluses there. So the sulfate ion must be two minus. Nitric acid, of course, the acid uh, HNO3, the salt being a nitrate. Uh, you've only got one hydrogen there. That should be, therefore, NO3 minus. And of course you can take that further. If, for example, I were to take uh, phosphoric acid, h 3 PO4, if you can just learn the formula of H3PO4, then you can therefore uh, infer from that that the phosphate ion must be PO4 charge 3 minus.